Welcome back everyone to a Sabaton reaction video. Well, these are what I first started with when we started doing reaction videos on the channel. I've done a ton of them, but it's been a while. Uh, so we're going to dive into a song I have not yet done a reaction to, which is Primo Victoria. This is the official music video for that song. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, I've heard the song a little bit. I don't know all the words to it or anything like that, but I have heard the beginning. Uh, I know Primo Victoria is Latin for first victory uh, and that the song is about the uh, D-Day invasions. So we're going to just go ahead and dive right into this. Uh, if you want to see any of my other Sabaton reaction videos, I've put a list with all of the links to every reaction I've done to a Sabaton song. Uh, we will also do at some point the Sabaton history behind this song. And when I do that, I will give you again the links to all the Sabaton history songs that I've done. All right, let's dive into this one. Through the gates of hell, as we may cut away to heaven through the Nazi So I heard an interview with the band, and they were asked the question, what line or what song, you know, really, you know, just defines who Sabaton is. And that was the line he used was through the gates of hell as we make our way to heaven through the Nazi lines, Primo Victoria. So uh, they were saying that is like the essence of who they are is captured in that one line of the song. So a lot to digest there. I've been training for years. You know, it's it's you have to really just try to put yourself in the position uh, of these men who are landing on D-Day. Now they're not all brand new soldiers. Some of them, uh, the First Infantry Division, for example, uh, for the U.S. Anyway, sorry about that. Um, so the First Infantry Division, for example, for the U.S., uh, the 82nd Airborne Division, which dropped behind uh, enemy lines, these are units who have already seen significant combat. But some of the others, like the 101st Airborne Division, for example, for the U.S., and I'm only mentioning U.S. units because they're the ones I'm most familiar with, this was their first combat. They've been training since 1942. They've been training and training and training. And so, you know, there's... I've never been a soldier, but I would have to think that the anticipation of all of that and then having the invasion delayed 24 hours right when they're ready to, to go uh, had to have been a lot for them mentally. And so finally they're getting combat. And for a lot of these guys, they'll never fire a shot in combat. He said, you know, the first ones to uh, go, the first ones to fall. Some of those guys get off the, the, the landing craft and they get killed the second they come off the landing craft. Never fire a shot in anger during the entire war for th these guys that are new. It just, uh, it's tragic and, and just incredible all at the same time. And, uh, you know, I'm hopefully going to Normandy next spring, so I cannot wait to be there. History for sure. So, you know, one of the things we forget uh, is that there were tanks landing on the beach, the beaches at Normandy. Now, a lot of them never made it. Um, there were these tanks that were rigged with like flotation devices, basically almost like like seeing a kid in a pool inside of his floaties. You know, same kind of thing with the the tanks. But a lot of them ended up sinking. I think there was one particular unit where like almost all of the tanks sank with the crews inside. I mean, I mean, some of these guys drowned before they could even get onto the beach. Uh, but there were tanks landing on uh, D-Day, and one of the big concerns that Eisenhower had going into the invasion was whether or not the sand on the beaches at Normandy could support the tanks landing. 
Uh, and this was something he was really concerned about and went back and forth with really double and triple and quadruple checking the information. They actually snuck guys up onto the beach uh, to check the sand uh, to be able to find out if it was possible. And it, and it was indeed possible. One of the things I love that they do is how they find ways to put the information like the date in. And they put the dates in a lot of the songs. Here they talk about the 6th of June, 1944. Um, you know, they do that in a lot of their songs. They kind of give that context of the exact date of things happening. I love that kind of information. So uh, they talk about the crossfire and the sand. One of the things that you'll see when I go to Normandy and, and shoot some content for you there uh, is that the the defenses were actually really set up brilliantly, uh, and they they didn't just set up you know machine guns and and. Uh, artillery straight down the beach so that they would fire at the forces as they landed. They set them up to allow crossfire so that they could shoot down the long axis of the beach, which allowed one gun to cover a lot more ground. And they had this on both sides and they had, you know, everything was laid out really brilliantly in terms of defensive positions. Yeah, Overlord, I mean, people talk about D-Day, but D-Day is just the initial landings. That's the the first part of this, and it's actually called Operation Neptune, which is the first part of the op Operation Overlord, which was an overall plan for not only the landings, but also what happened in the days that followed the landings. Because they had, this was all, you know, the logistics behind this are just incredible. Uh, and that's something we could do an entire series of videos on, but... Uh, they had things planned out for each day and where they needed to be at certain points and what needed to happen to consolidate the beachheads and, and where they needed to capture harbors and what they needed to have by certain times. This was all really well thought out and that was all part of Operation Overlord, which is that whole kind of Cotentin Peninsula, the whole area of Normandy. Um, that you know these beaches th these are not just little beaches you know put this in context I think it's like 60 miles from the end of one beach to the end of the other uh, you know you've got Utah and Omaha which are the American beaches and then you've got Juno Golden Sword uh, which are the beaches for the Canadians the Brits and the others that are landing uh, free French forces things like that <laughs> And they got the little World of Tanks logo going on there. That's cool. I love World of Tanks. Haven't played it for a while, but have done some World of Tanks uh, 
on the Xbox, not necessarily on my gaming channel. But anyway, oh man, I'm going to be jamming to that song when I'm in Normandy, and I cannot wait for it. That's going to be coming uh, end of April, beginning of May, uh, COVID willing, that'll be happening. I'm headed to Vicksburg next week, going to be shooting a ton of content for the channel. I'm also going to have some announcements that I'll be posting tomorrow morning just to let you know about some things coming up. I'm having my uh, LASIK surgery on my eyes tomorrow, so I'll make a video in the morning. Not sure if I'll be up to making a, a video on Saturday or not. We'll see how I feel, but hopefully I will. Thanks for watching. Check out all the other reaction videos to Sabaton songs in the list below. If you don't see a song listed and you want to see me react to it, let me know in the comments.